It was a wet day. John and Ray were in Martin's Creek hut, reading hunting magazines. One had a story which said white-tailed deer travel long distances to feed. That was not our view, so we decided on a plan uh, to prove the truth. It had to be simple and at low cost, as we were funding it ourselves. Homestead Block would be an ideal place to catch, tag and release a few white-tailed deer to see how far they do travel because we knew that the previous run holder, Tim Tiaika, and his wife Nairi, who finished farming about 1986, had been involved in a project where Tim caught a number of whitetail and kept them in captivity. However, the whitetail did not fare very well behind wire, and after the first winter, they were in such poor condition, Tim opened the gate and let them go. In the meantime, he had built a deer quietening shed uh, from the wreckage of a fishing boat that came ashore at the bottom end of Mason Bay, which was subsequently turned into a hut that was uh, used by recreational hunters. During an early trip at the homestead block, uh, John and his party found uh, one of Tim's old traps. The trap was still in good condition and was set, as resulting in this deer being caught. That doe was released with some coloured nylon cord attached to each ear, and four months later she was shot by another hunter. At that time she was only uh, 300 metres away from where she had been captured. This was what led us to believe that we could be successful in catching a few deer for the project. Tim's traps were rather simple, simply galvanised pipe with a drop gate at the front and covered in trawl mesh. We learned that we had to put a trip in, which was simply uh, cord which went up to a possum trap. When the deer pushed against the cord, it set the possum trap off, which pulled the pin from the uh, metal pipe that was holding a pin, keeping the gate up. The gate then dropped, trapping the deer inside. Peter Willems from Doc arranged for the loan of three radio collars from FRI but our first capture attempts were met by failure. Anything could go wrong, it would. Some of the trigger traps rusted and wouldn't, uh, wouldn't close. Uh, we caught possums and rats um, that set off the trip and dropped the gate. Um, and several deer were actually caught, but because the netting was getting a bit old, uh, the deer were able to force their way out. What was really surprising was how small a hole it actually took for a deer to get it, its way uh, through the netting. Where's Ray? Oh, there's Ray. And here, here we are at Tim Diaka's old house. And these very kind gentlemen walked around and told us that there was a deer in the trap. But unfortunately, by the time we got there, due to Ray's poor notmanship, it wasn't the, bloody Ray at all. The, the deer was gone. At Homestead, Thursday night, 10 to 8. We're along the bloody way up from Martins Creek and the deer got out. Steve Gamble was a Tua Tapri helicopter pilot who occasionally flew to Stewart Island to capture deer for a safari park. Peter Willems organised with uh, Steve to capture three uh, whitetail, which he did within an hour uh, close by to Island Hill. Uh, these, deer, these deer were all fitted with a radio collar and a individually coloured ear tag with a day glow uh, ribbon 
attached so that they would be able to be seen by hunters. Each one had a different number and details uh, to advise any hunters that shot them of what was going on. One of those deer was found dead in the first month, but we were able to put her collar onto another deer that we captured just a little later. For the next 13 months, we sent someone to Mason Bay uh, once a month with the uh, telemetry uh, radio uh, tracking device uh, to um, see where the animals were. We set up tracking stations on Big Sand Hill and on Island Hill and a third one uh, at right angles to both. This worked pretty well, um, but it was a lot of work and not all the days were fine and sunny. What do you think of that, Heck? Fucking good, eh? Huh? Yeah, the old girl. Looks like she might be barren anyway. Come on. Doe number three was kept. Doe number three was one of the deer captured by helicopter in December 2000. Within a couple of days, she was back in her home territory, no doubt feeding her a very hungry fawn. She was plotted on 15 occasions over the next 13 months, living within the area of her capture of approximately one square kilometre. Although this is a very popular area with hunters, with hunters passing through, on most days of the year, there were no reported sightings, and it wasn't until 15 months later that she was shot uh, near the old airstrip. This was the only time that we knew she was outside her home range. Within a short space of time, we learned quite a lot about trapping, and our success rate improved. We replaced the possum traps with a rat trap, which was more effective in dropping the gate. Uh, we also replaced uh, a lot of the old and decaying netting. Doe number seven was another helicopter capture. Unfortunately, her radio collar transmitter failed after five months and we were only able to get six uh, telemetry locations for her. All these were within the small uh, area of her capture. She was shot just over seven years later, still living in the same area. During that time, there were only three reported sightings of this deer. We presume this spiker was about 15 months old when he was captured in March. He was released. He was released with the fitted with the collar that we recovered from the deer that had died. Within 24 hours, we tracked him at Martins Creek, but that was the last signal we got from him, and it wasn't until three years later that he was shot by some hunters almost at Cavalier. There were no sightings of him during this period, and he is the only animal that we know went outside that small home range. At four years of age, he displayed only four points and was never going to get into the record book. Ooh, girl. Ooh. Ooh, girl. Ooh. Ah. Oh, put on the 
Look on the ground, don't they? Run like this, but. Didn't like that bit, did you, mate? Sorry. But it's all for the cause. You want to just let her go out of here or? I can do. Yeah. Young deer. She's in extremely good condition though. She's as fat as butter. I'll, I'll open the gate and let her out. Yeah, we're, we're all set, John. You can let her have her freedom. Two forms, number one. Number eight were both shot within a few months of capture, only a few hundred metres away from where they had been caught. Uh, doe number four lived for uh, over three years and she was shot less than 300 metres away from where she'd been captured. No sightings of her were ever reported. Three other animals were captured and released with ear tags, only one reported sighting of any of these deer was made and apart from the buck it is very obvious that these white-tailed deer had a very small home range in most cases less than one square kilometre.